in this brief uh, uh, recording, I will talk to you about the uh, anatomy of uh, esophagus. So, first of all, let us um, uh, start with the beginning and termination uh, of uh, the esophagus. Then we will explain the um, the relation of the esophagus plus the innervation and the blood supply. So, at the first, it started, you know, as we are talking about the GI system, and once we started with the oral cavity, then from oral cavity, we will continue with the pharynx, then from the pharynx that terminates at the level of C6. Now, from there, from C6, uh, the, um, uh, the pharynx terminated and at the same time, it is now the beginning of esophagus. So esophagus started at the level of C6, and it goes all the way until it reaches the abdomen and uh, the uh, sorry the diaphragm, where it penetrates the uh, the diaphragm to the abdominal uh, cavity at the level of uh, thoracic vertebra number. 10. So it started at the cervical vertebra number 6 and terminated at the level of thoracic uh, vertebra number uh, 10 where it pushes the, the, uh, 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 the diaphragm, right? So uh, this opening of the esophagus through the diaphragm we call it esophageal opening which is very simple. Now from there uh, it joins the uh, stomach in the abdominal cavity. Now, let us understand the uh, uh, relation of the, uh, or let me explain to you the relation of the esophagus in the superior mediastinum and in the inferior mediastinum. So, yes, we can divide the esophagus and cervical, thoracic, and abdominal part, but I prefer to uh, uh, say okay. This is the image on the line at the sternal angle, and this is the superior, the uh, superior mediastinum. So the relation of the esophagus, as you see, always remember that the trachea is anterior to the esophagus, and between the trachea and uh, the esophagus, there is a recurrent laryngeal nerve. If you talk about the superior mediastinum, that means from the sternal angle to the upper border of first rib here. So, uh, what we have here anteriorly is the left recurrent laryngeal nerve that you see here. Look at the left recurrent laryngeal nerve and you have the trachea. Somebody can say, okay, what about the uh, right recurrent laryngeal nerve? No. The right recurrent laryngeal nerve, uh, 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 it is uh, uh, hooks around the uh, right subclavian artery and ascends between, of course, the trachea and esophagus. So, if you say the relation of esophagus above the uh, superior mediastinum, this is a superior mediastinum area. So, above it, you have, yes, the trachea, and you have the left recurrent laryngeal nerve, and you have right recurrent laryngeal nerve. But in the superior mediastinum, there is no right recurrent laryngeal nerve because it's up. Anyway, this is anteriorly in the superior mediastinum. What about posteriorly? Posterior to the esophagus, of course, this is the esophagus. Posterior to it, you have the thoracic vertebrae. Now, on the right and on the left, you have, uh, respectively, the right uh, pleura and lung, you see here, and left pleura and uh, lung, as you see. Uh, a plus in the left here, let me erase it. So, related to the esophagus, on the right, yes, you have the right lung and the pleura. Related to the esophagus on the left, you have left lung and the pleura plus the thoracic duct. You see the thoracic duct, which is a lymphatic duct that drains the lymph from the uh, abdominal region up here at the junction between the internal jugular and subclavian uh, vein. So these are the relations of the esophagus in the uh, superior mediastinum. Let us move a little bit below, below this line, below the sternal angle line. Again, this is the line, sternal angle line, or between T4 and T5. So below it, you have the uh, posterior mediastinum. Uh, uh, of course, that divides three parts. But anyway, this is again the esophagus. Anteriorly, it is related to right pulmonary 
artery and lift mean bronchus always remember that right pulmonary artery lift mean bronchus so this is the right pulmonary artery and this is the lift mean bronchus also if you go a little bit down here my friends it is the location of the pericardium and heart so this is the pericardium and inside it you have the heart right so the pericardium the pericardium my friends here separates the left atrium because you know this is the heart right so this is the right atrium this is the left atrium this is the right ventricle and this is the uh, left ventricle so the left atrium is located uh, in very close relation just anterior to esophagus that means this is the location of left atrium that's located here of the heart but it's separated from the esophagus by the pericardium that encircles the heart right so this is the uh, 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 this is the relation of the esophagus mm, again here anteriorly now posteriorly it's related to thoracic duct I will show you where is that and the uh, thoracic uh, aorta and a zygos uh, vein right so uh, posteriorly you have the thoracic duct that ascends I would prefer to use the let me show you where is that here is the esophagus again and posterior to it as I mentioned you have the thoracic duct although it is the thoracic duct indeed at the first at the first at the beginning it is to the right side of esophagus then it crosses at the left of T5 it crosses behind the esophagus then it ascends to the left of it right so if you look here for the thoracic duct up it is to the left right because this is right and this is left so the thoracic duct because it ascends here to the right of the esophagus then at the level of t5 see here say here it crosses behind the esophagus then it ascends there right this is the pathway of thoracic uh, duct and of course as i mentioned the thoracic artery here and azygos uh, veins i will show you where is the azygos veins let me sh yes this is the azygos vein right now um to the right yes you have the right lung and the pleura and to the left you have the left lung and uh, pleura uh, uh, and of course you have the thoracic or descending aorta again and again just to remind you my friend that thoracic aorta is the same as descending aorta they are the same right this is the descending aorta and we call it thoracic aorta okay now importantly my friends away from now from the relation let us let us uh, talk about the esophagus itself and here the uh, uh, I, I would like to shed the light on the constrictions inside this muscular tube so the esophagus as you see has four constrictions or compressions narrowing area the first one between the pharynx you know the pharynx ends at the level of c6 and then the esophagus started so the esophagus is a continuation of the pharynx anyway this junction between the esophagus and pharynx is the first one uh, pharyngeal esophageal constriction and also you know the relation uh, of the i think we forgot to uh, say uh, arch of aorta bust but the arch of aorta is also creates a kind of compression in the esophagus so this is the second constriction right also the left main bronchus creates a compression of esophagus this is the third one also where is the um uh, at the esophageal hiatus 
or opening the esophagus one passes through the diaphragm it creates also a kind of a compression or a constriction so we have four constrictions now what's the significance of that before the significance of that let me remind you with these numbers if you insert uh, say a device or a tube or NG tube uh, from the mouth this is the mouth of the patient for example and these are the incisor, incisor teeth so from here if you insert a tube now I think we have to approximate it let us draw it closer here say this is the and the, the mouth and uh, here's the incisor teeth so if you insert a tube from here from the from the incisor teeth the length of the tube to reach the uh, the first constriction here is a pharyngeal constriction it's about 15 centimeter now to the to reach the second constriction created by the arch of aorta now it is about 22.5 centimeter to reach the uh, 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 the constriction created by the left main bronchus you need the length of the tube would be now 27.5 centimeter to reach the last one at the um, the last compression or the last constriction at the esophageal hiatus it's about this length about 40 centimeters so 15 22.5 27.5 and 40 centimeters what's the importance of these constrictions well indeed indeed uh i want to say that if you swallow an object for example you expect um, to lodge in one of these constrictions also if especially in children sometimes they um, drink or ingest like corrosive substances right so these substances um, can create some time uh, or most of the time uh, like uh, burning for the internal surface of the esophagus so where do you expect mostly uh, um, where do you expect the part of esophagus will be affected uh, well indeed we expect at these compressions why because the fluids will pass very slowly at these constrictions that means the corrosive substances or the corrosive substance will um, create a kind of more impact on the esophagus uh, than any other uh, uh, location in it so plus what's the significance of it in case if you uh, for example upper endoscopy uh, you insert like a tube the specialized physician insert a tube to have a look to the esophagus or the uh, stomach so the endoscope you expect to create a kind um, or uh, it will face a kind of uh, resistant at this location at this location at this location and at this location where is the constrictions uh, there okay now what about the innervation of esophagus indeed the innervation of esophagus it's a little bit complicated but i would like to make it simple and say before that let me show you what what we have here yes this is the esophagus yes look at the esophagus here we can divide it into upper part and lower part this is number one number two look at the left vagus nerve and right vagus nerve then because you know because of the rotation of the stomach it rotates the, the uh, vagi nerve with it that means the left vagus nerve that was here when, when the stomach rotated so the left vagus now becomes the anterior vagal trunk and the right vagus nerve becomes like posterior not to the right and it becomes the uh, posterior vagal trunk look at the shadow 
of the posterior vagal trunk, which is the right vagus nerve indeed. But because of the rotation of the stomach, now the right becomes posterior and the left becomes anterior. Anyway, the right, the anterior vagal trunk and posterior vagal trunk, they in the lower part of esophagus, they create a kind of a plexus around esophagus. We call it esophageal plexus and in this plex and this plexus the esophageal plexus is not just created by anterior vagal trunk and posterior vagal trunk no it's also uh, 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 there is a participation from sympathetic trunk that means not the vagal trunks not the parasympathetic when you say vagal nerve vagus nerve that means you remember the parasympathetic fibers parasympathetic fibers so the esophageal plexus is not just uh, parasympathetic fibers from vagus nerve no but also a sympathetic fibers so this plexus formed by sympathetic and parasympathetic so the innervation of esophagus what i want to say it's parasympathetic and sympathetic fibers parasympathetic fibers from vagus nerve or vagi nerves right but the Sympathetic uh, nerves come from the sympathetic trunk that's located on each side of the uh, verte vertebral column. We call them sympathetic trunk, right? Now, let me erase these things. And uh, here, again. Uh, so, uh, distal to the bifurcation, uh, yes, I explained this. And now... What I want to say that the upper part, let us now talk about the innervation in the upper part and lower part. The upper part of esophagus is uh, 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 innervated by a branch of recurrent laryngeal nerve. Look at the left recurrent laryngeal nerve and if you go up above the uh, superior medius time, you will get again right recurrent laryngeal nerve. So the recurrent laryngeal nerves here uh, 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 innervate the innervate the esophagus or the upper part of the uh, esophagus and of course they represent the parasympathetic fibers right parasympathetic fibers. because you know the recurrent laryngeal nerves they are branch of vagus nerve right so that means again back to the parasympathetic and sympathetic so parasympathetic here in the upper part through recurrent laryngeal nerve from vagus nerve and the sympathetic fibers come uh, 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 from uh, the postganglionic sympathetic fiber reach through the inferior thyroid artery because most of the time the uh, look at the inferior here this is the subclavian artery and this is the thyrocervical trunk and uh, that gives the inferior thyroid artery then it gives pharyngeal branch so from inferior thyroid artery that passes medial to scalenus anterior so uh, it also uh, a sympathetic fibers uh, accompany it until it reaches the uh, upper part of the uh, esophagus now uh, this is about the upper part of esophagus sympathetic and parasympathetic now what about the lower part of esophagus the lower part of esophagus my friends uh, uh, innervated by the esophageal plexus that created by vagus nerve and the sympathetic fibers from thoracic area the uh, sympathetic fibers from sympath from the sympathetic trunk at the thoracic area right so vagus nerves on both sides create this plexus that means it contains parasympathetic created by vagus nerve and sympathetic from thoracic from the uh, sympathetic uh, trunk in the thoracic area very simple sympathetic and parasympathetic okay uh, now one thing if uh, uh, it's good to know that the yes we mentioned that we have parasympathetic fibers uh, represented by vagus nerve and sympathetic fibers now the parasympathetic fibers here um, the parasympathetic created by vagus nerve um, indeed they carry the physiological processes and the peristaltic movement and reflexes activities of the esophagus but pain sensation pain sensation 
from the esophagus carried by sympathetic trunk not parasympathetic no it's carried by sympathetic trunk and because of the location of the heart here and the innervation of sympathetic fibers to the heart that means the sympathetic fibers to the heart and sympathetic fibers to the esophagus they share the same location of origin from sympathetic trunk here right that means pain in the heart and pain in the esophagus they are sometimes look alike they are similar to each other and sometimes it's difficult to distinguish between the esophageal and cardiac vein now the arterial uh, arterial supply the arterial uh, supply of the heart comes from a different region the upper part of esophagus as i mentioned uh, the upper part of esophagus uh, supplied by the inferior thyroid artery which is a branch from thyro cervical trunk which is a branch of, which is the one from the first branch of subclavian artery also the esophagus because it's extended down it gets our uh, branch from the bronchial right and left bronchial artery or arteries and also there are uh, esophageal branch from the descending aorta as well so the bronchial arteries and esophageal branch they are from the descending aorta so you have inferior thyro inferior thyroid artery in the upper part and the lower part you have the bronchial and esophageal branch from the thoracic aorta plus there is anastomosis with the left gastric artery let me show you this is the vein but it's a close here you have also the left gastric artery okay that anastomosis up so that was about the blood supply um, the arterial supply of the esophagus now what about the venous drainage well it's not that much different from there but especially in the upper part and lower part but in the middle uh, here we have a couple of things so the upper part of course it will be drained similar to the arterial supply it, it drains into the uh, let me use the green one it drains into inferior thyroid vein right and in the lower part you have the left gastric um, left gastric vein that of course drains uh, or it anastomoses it creates a kind of anastomosis with the submucosal uh, veins in the esophagus keep it in your mind we'll come back to this part right and also in this part um, the of the esophagus in the thorax here um, the blood drained into a zygous vein and hemiazygous uh, vein and the intercostal uh, vein right so back to the uh, or let me summarize it to you so the drainage by to the esophagus by inferior thyroid vein by the left gastric vein and through a zygous hemiazygous and intercostal veins now what's the story of left gastric vein indeed the left gastric uh, vein meets the lower esophageal veins here is the esophagus and these are the lower esophageal veins so the left gastric vein anastomosis with the lower esophageal vein at the opening of the uh, uh, where the esophagus passes through the uh, the diaphragm you see you see at this location look at the anastomosis here so indeed this is uh, a positive and negative point but uh, uh, at this area on this uh, site we consider it a porto caval venous anastomosis that means there is a uh, the uh, portal vein here that it drains the blood from the intestine spleen and so forth from gi system in the abdomen if there is an obstruction 
here of course to the liver there's an obstruction here the blood can be shifted um, of course through the left gastric uh, vein to the uh, through the lower esophageal veins then they will drain into a zygos and from a zygos to the vena cava so this location is we call it porto caval venous anastomosis that means portal circulation can be shifted um, uh, uh, indirectly to the cava through this route right in case of portal hypertension portal hypertension if there is blockage in the portal vein this creates a kind of portal hypertension and the blood will be shifted away from there and find this route through the esophagus to the azygos then to cava let me show you what i mean it's very important why because this thing can create a kind of esophageal varices dawali bilmari esophageal varices look at the dilation of the submucosal veins in the esophagus and sometimes it's urgent it's urgent emergency case in case if there is esophageal bleeding from the esophageal varices there right so it needs direct intervention this is because of this let me explain to you again you know we have um here the uh, 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 intestine and we have the stomach we have a spleen and we have the pancreas and so forth so the blood from different structures in the gi system the blood returns it through all of these veins to create a kind of portal vein this vein called portal vein so the portal vein or portal venous system um it um carries the blood from different structures with uh, of gi intestine and stomach and so forth and of course there are a lot of metabolites and something like that and so they need to pass it through the liver to be metabolized and detoxified and from the liver the blood will pass to the inferior vena cava and from inferior vena cava to the heart right to the heart now if there is a blockage and it does happen if there is a there is a blockage here clot in the um portal venous um portal vein and it does happen in many patients and it happens uh recently with patients with covid 19. anyway there is a blockage in the portal vein here uh, 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 uh the blood will try to find another way to reach the cava so the best way is through the left gastric vein so through the left gastric vein that creates anastomosis as i mentioned earlier with the lower esophageal submucosal vein here so the veins of lower part of esophagus in the submucosa they anastomosed with it then from there the blood shifted through the azygous vein then from azygous vein to the inner cava and from into the heart but the esophagus has to pay the price the price of it because of this pressure of the on the submucosal small submucosal veins in the esophagus internally this creates an of dilations abnormal dilatation of the veins inside of the submucosal veins right or the veins of uh, the esophagus internally and this creates a varices uh, varices esophageal varices dawali fi el mari and that's prone most of the time for bleeding as you see so that was about the anatomy of uh, esophagus briefly uh, thank you uh, so much hope you find value in it thanks